Hey, what's up, guys? It's the Sports Blitz here, and we're back with another seven round mock draft. Guys, last time we did the Jacksonville Jaguars. Today, we're going to be doing the Detroit Lions. So, before we get into it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. We're only 34 sub subscribers away from 1,000. That's my biggest goal on YouTube, guys. So, if you could help me reach that goal, that'd be super appreciated. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get on into it. So, for the Detroit Lions, I am looking at this um, as the Lions have a lot of big needs. Um, their team is far from complete, you know, especially with Dan Campbell taking over. There's going to be a lot that is getting rebuilt. So, um, you know, if we come to a point where there's a player that we don't really see worth taking at that point, we will attempt to trade back. But, you know, if there is a player we want to take, we'll take him. So um, we're going to go with what we think is best player available. So let's go ahead and get on into it. <clears throat> so number two, um, I mean, the the Jaguars took Aiden Hutchinson at number one. So we're going to take the, ad, the other edge rusher and take Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, I feel like the Jags definitely need some pass rush help. Um, I mean, their pass rush was kind of, kind of disappointing this year. I... I feel like they weren't getting to the quarterback enough, and that was making it tough on the secondary. Um, you know what, guys? Hold on just a sec. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I accidentally, when I was doing the uh, the initial setup, I accidentally only selected one round, so now we're starting over here. Um, but yeah, that kind of goes back to my point. Um, they weren't getting to the quarterback enough, and... I feel like it was making it tough on the secondary. I feel like, um, considering what the front did, the secondary played pretty solid. Um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like, I'm going to try not to slaughter his name, but Amani Oroarie, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's so hard for me to say his name. Um, but yeah, I feel like he had a really good season. Um, I mean, yeah, he had the interceptions, but even beyond that, he didn't allow a ton of yards. Like, he was playing really, really well. Um, so, I feel like for what the secondary was given, I feel like they played really well. So, you get some pass rush in there, that's going to help that defense a lot. Um, number 28, guys, I'm so glad he's still on the board. We're going to take Nakobe Dean here. Um, my reasoning for that is... Okay, Dan Campbell is, you know, a tough, nitty-gritty coach. He wants a really tough, you know, nitty-gritty guy in the middle of his defense. Nakobe Dean is exactly that. He can he can cover really well. He can stop the run. He can rush the passer. He's just he's just an all-around good player that I feel like Dan Campbell would really like to have. So, um, then here at 34. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what is available. So if you want a receiver, Jahan Dotson is available. Let's see what other... Drake London is as well. Drake London is a really big body receiver, so if you want more of a contested catch type of guy, you know, there he is. Um, I don't think we're going to look at a quarterback this early because... I feel like Dan Campbell and Jared Goff actually mesh pretty well. That's just my personal opinion. I I feel like for what Goff was given as well, I feel like he played pretty pretty solid. Um, I feel like they'd be more likely to <clears throat> to try to replace him next year. So um, I feel like the offensive line played really well. They don't really need a tackle. Um, I think the pick here, I think the pick has got to be Drake London, go ahead and give them, you know, a big-bodied contested catch receiver that, you know, can just go up and make a play. I feel like that's definitely something they were missing out on this year. So I think that'd be great for Jared Goff and that offense. So um, I feel like it's going pretty well so far. You know, got a new, you know, really good edge rusher, got a tough linebacker in the middle of that defense, got a good weapon. I feel like this is going well so far. So, then third round, <coughs> um, 
Let's see. So, ooh. Okay, those of you who do watch my channel know that I am a huge fan of Malik Willis. I know he's not NFL ready right now, but when he is, his upside is going to be insane. I feel like he could be kind of the new Lamar Jackson of this draft. I mean, and really, like, all through college, he didn't ever have even a decent offensive line. His offensive line was terrible. Um... I'm really tempted to take him right here. I know he wouldn't start his first year. It'd still be Jared Goff. But, like, it's really hard to pass up on that. Um, oh, man. Guys, this is really hard to pass up on. I think we might have to take Malik Willis. Um, it is the third round. I don't think that's really too much of a reach. If Malik Willis does work out in the future and you get your franchise quarterback from that... That's awesome. Um, so I say stick with Goff this year. Let Malik Willis develop. I, I, I really like the sound of that. I really do. I know it goes against what I just said, but, I mean, it's the third round. Malik Willis is a guy that very well could go in the first. I think we got to take him. I really do. I really think he's he's worth it right there. And I think worst case scenario, even if he doesn't work out, it's a third round you spend on him, not, you know, not your second overall pick. So there's that. Um, so looking at what is available right here, I think we could definitely look at maybe taking another linebacker. I feel like linebacker is definitely a position that the Lions could use some help at. Um... I'm trying to remember, so obviously you got DeAndre Swift, but Jamal um, Jamal Williams isn't a free agent, right? Um, let me just a sec, I'm going to hurry and fact check that. Okay, so yeah, he signed a two-year deal before coming in 2021, so he will be there for 2022, so we're not going to look at running back right now. I feel like that's still a really solid running back combination. Um, I really like that. Um Obviously, they've got TJ Hawkinson, so tight end isn't really a big need right here. Um, let's see. Yeah, guys, I'm kind of thinking we look at taking possibly another um, another linebacker. I mean, they're, they're, this is a deep class for cornerbacks. I mean, it's very likely that, you know, one of these guys is available. I do really like Josh Joby. Um, so, I mean, if we could get him in the fourth round, that would be awesome. So, I think for now, let's go ahead and take let's go and take linebacker Quay Walker. Um, you know, I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen too terribly much of his film, so I will admit that right now. Um, he is a guy that I actually heard about just earlier today actually um he was actually in daniel jeremiah's mock draft as a first rounder um so you know seeing that tells me that i really need to look up this guy and see how he is um but uh i think where we need a linebacker and he's sitting right here i think that's i think that's a good pick so yeah, I think this has been a solid draft. I think I think the I think the Lions' main needs have mostly been on defense. Um, I feel like Dan Campbell really wants to transform that defense into something that's really really tough, nitty gritty, and you know, just tough nosed. Um, and I feel like that's really what he'll be able to do. Um, oh. My mistake, guys. I didn't realize the Lions didn't have a fourth or fifth round pick. Um, I do know they have multiple sixth round picks. Um, so there's, there's, there's probably going to be a few good guys available. Reed Blankenship. I'm actually really surprised he's projected this far down here. Um, he was someone that I had heard some some hype around possibly, be, possibly being as high as a third rounder. Um... I mean, I need to study more of his more of his film. I'll say that right now. But I've heard, fr from what I've heard from other people, 
this guy could be a third rounder. Um, safety is a need for the Lions. I don't think that'd be a bad pick right there. Um, I, th I think that's where we go. I think that's where we go. Um, and I've actually heard quite a bit about Reed Blinkenship. Um, then we've got another pick right here. I think let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and take Matt Hankins right here. See if um, see if he can be a good depth piece at corner. Obviously, um, obviously Jeff Okuda so far hasn't worked out the way that you know the way that we want. But I mean, really though. The way that Amani Uarie, I think is how you say it, um, has stepped in, you know, he's kind of been what we've wanted Jeff Okuda to be. Um, and, I mean, you keep giving Jeff Okuda some time, he will develop into something pretty solid. So you consider you get your, you know, th number three or even maybe number four corner in the sixth round. I don't think that's that bad. I really don't. Um, so looking at right here, I mean, I think we could definitely look at taking another edge rusher right here, get Mitchell Agude from UCLA. Um, obviously it's going to be a depth piece. Most of the guys this late in the draft are going to just be depth pieces. They're not going to be starters or anything, but, um, <coughs> but yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea at all to you know, stack up on positions of need. Um, I think right here, I think let's go ahead and take a look at Nick Ford from Utah. Um, I'm just going to say right now, I have actually watched quite a few of, um, of, of, of the Utah Utes games this year. Um, and I, I really liked their offensive line. Um, I mean, Nick Ford, he can play at either guard position. Again, and again I don't think he's going to come in and instantly be a starter on that line. I mean, the Lions' offensive line is pretty good. But, I mean, if a guy were to get injured, he'd be a pretty solid, you know, guard to step in. So we're going to take Nick Ford right there. Okay, Lions have pick 238 right here. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at Robert Cooper here from Florida State. Um, I feel like the Lions could definitely use some interior D line help. Um, obviously, just another depth piece right here. He'd be definitely rotational. I feel like really though, I don't feel like the Lions interior D line is super super deep. So getting another depth piece there, I mean. Robert Cooper would probably get a little bit of playing time right here. So let's go ahead and review our picks here. So number two, take Kayvon Thibodeau, really helps out the pass rush quite a bit. He's a D end really though that can really help in the run game as well. He's he's big enough that he can stop the run pretty well. Um, then you get Nakobe Dean again, guys. I'm a huge fan of this cat. Um, Drake London, big body, um, playmaking receiver you know can win contested catches um get malik willis again guys that's just a guy you can't pass up on in the third round i mean at pick 66 when he very well could honestly be going in the first round i mean you just can't pass up on that um then we get quay walker which again daniel jeremiah just had him in the first round um I personally need to study more film on him, but where the Lions could definitely benefit off having another linebacker, I think that's pretty pretty worth it right there. Um, then Reed Blankenship in the um, is their first sixth round pick. Um, again, guys, I've heard good things about him. I've heard him even in the third and fourth round. I haven't studied I haven't studied too much of his film yet, so I'll need to learn more about him first. But, I mean, considering safety is also a position of need right there, I'd say that's a good pick. Um, then we finish off with Matt Hankins from Iowa, Mitchell Agude from UCLA, Nick Ford from Utah, and Robert Cooper from Florida State. <coughs> I mean, overall, 
I really like specifically the defensive additions here. Um, I feel like this really helps take the defense um, up up a level or two. Um, the Lions have quite a bit of cap room too. They can they can spend in free agency and make that defense even better. Um, if Dan Campbell and the GM make the right moves, this could be a good coming season for the Lions. And while I'm not a Lions fan myself, I love seeing the Lions win, okay? I'm a big fan of Dan Campbell. I I really, really want to see the Lions succeed. And I feel like if they have a good draft like this and, you know, and a good free agency, they can start winning soon. So, um, guys, let me know what you think of this seven-round mock. Let me know if there were any picks in there that you would have rather us take instead. But, yeah, guys, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.